My oldest son is a Bigfoot believer. Over spring break, we took a day to go to the North American Bigfoot Museum. When we were there, Cliff Barackman from the HBO Max show Finding Bigfoot was there. It is one of my son's favorite shows. My son got an autographed picture, and we took a photo of them together for his Facebook page. The Bigfoot Museum is pretty impressive. If you're ever in the area, you should definitely check it out. Even if, like me, you aren't a believer. Seeing the museum reminded me of the movie that convinced me that Bigfoot doesn't exist. The North American Bigfoot Museum is much more professional and convincing than the North American Museum of Anthropology and Harry and the Hendersons. But something in my mind made that connection, so I made some time to watch Harry and the Hendersons with my son. At the end of the movie, a family of Sasquatches reveal themselves right in front of the Henderson family and retreat into the woods with Harry. At 10 years old, when I first saw this movie, this caused a shift in the way I thought about the creature. In primitive stories, like the first 10 chapters of Genesis, it is common to see a species treated as though it is a character. The serpent in Genesis 3 is a prime example. Adam himself is another example, though we lose some of that in translation. This is basically how I thought of Bigfoot before watching Harry and his family appear and then disappear. I have to say, as a non-believer, the evidence for Bigfoot is surprisingly competent. But part of the realization that led to me rejecting Bigfoot was the realization that there must be baby Bigfoot. I grew up on 30 acres in the woods with family that owned hundreds of acres. The number of times that a friend or family member had actually seen a grown bear was vanishingly rare. They're shy enough and smart enough to avoid being seen. Bear cubs, in contrast, are curious and playful. Also, if you see them, turn around. If you accidentally get between the cub and the mother, it will not go well for you. The existence of baby big feet means two things. First, it means playful and curious young that are going to be last apt to hide than their grown counterparts. Second, it means a population large enough that males and females keep finding each other regularly. There's an episode of Jimmy Atkins' Mysterious World that summarizes my skepticism towards this particular cryptid very well. But for today, I want to play What If. What if Bigfoot is real, and we just haven't found one yet? One thing that I would say is that Bigfoot is probably a hominid cousin to humanity. Even though hundreds of samples of suspected Bigfoot hair has been sent for testing, it always comes back as a known animal, usually bear or bobcat or human. This means that Bigfoot DNA needs to be close enough to ours that it tests as human. Most likely, Bigfoot would need to be close enough to have the chromosome 2 fusion. You can see this in their foot shape as well. Their big toe points forward like our big toe. Chimps have a big toe that points to the side. Bigfoot would have to be close enough to human that when we did find a Bigfoot skull or whatever, it was mistaken for human. I've been in the woods and I know how animals hide. I do believe that Bigfoot could hide from casual observers. It's much harder to believe that Bigfoot has been dodging cameras and professional Bigfoot seekers all this time. I think the available evidence is against it, but only just barely.